Hi all, Keith here, welcome to the video. With all the craziness in the world today, people are looking for alternatives to traditional hotels. One of these options is Airbnb, and there's quite a few to choose from in the Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge, Tennessee area. So let's take a look at a few, and I'll even give you some tips for Airbnb along the way. Let's get into it, roll that intro. So the first thing we should talk about, just in case you're not aware, Airbnb isn't like your traditional hotel booking site. It's in the same realm as the hospitality accommodations, but Airbnb does not actually own any of these accommodations. It's a digital marketplace for hosts to list their properties that they own. All right, now that you know what an Airbnb is, if you didn't already, let's take a look at a few options in the Gatlinburg area. Okay, this is the Airbnb website, and I went ahead and just put in a few dates mid-October this year, just to kind of show you what peak times would be like. So just note that these are probably the highest prices of the year, so you'll probably find cheaper prices at these places during different times of the year. But anyway, as you can see, I have over 300 <laughs> options here. And this map doesn't show all the options, it just shows this page of options. So it would be a little overwhelming if you saw everything here at once. So the first tip I have for using their website is to use filters. So if I click this more filters button here, it brings up this list. You know, things you expect like bedrooms, bathrooms, but also they have things like amenities and uh, property type down here as well. And here's a few that you might not know about, Airbnb Plus and Superhost. And basically these are options that allow you to be, you know, have a certain level of confidence with the Airbnb that you're picking out, that it's rated highly and these are uh, extra validations that these hosts have to go through. So Airbnb Plus, they have to maintain a 4.8 rating or higher, accepted 95% of all booking requests, and not canceled reservations except for extenuating circumstances. All of that in the past year and they have to maintain the Airbnb standards. They also go through a complete visual home inspection from Airbnb and a home visit from an inspector. And they have to also make any changes that the inspector or Airbnb suggests to their property to get that plus tag. And a property can fall out of the Airbnb plus category if they don't maintain these standards. So as you can see, they really have to live up to a high standard here. Now this may or may not be important to you because this is extra validation that more advanced properties, if you would, will uh, go through this whole process. It takes extra money and stuff like that. So don't let this plus thing totally uh, dissuade you from it. I would say mostly look at the reviews, the amount of, review, amount of reviews that a place has and go by that. But the plus is there if you're interested. And now let's talk about super hosts. Basically, this is a person that's been in the Airbnb game for a while because they have to have over 100 book nights at their place. Like plus, they have to maintain the 4.8 rating on Airbnb or higher, and they can only have a 1% cancellation rate, excluding extenuating circumstances. It's basically to validate a host's reliability, if nothing else. But as you can see, this is gonna take someone a while to get there if you know they started with a great new property on the website. It's gonna take them a little bit to get to that 100 day mark. So if you go with the super host option, it may exclude some great properties and newer listings that are out there. But again, like the Airbnb Plus, if this is important to you, if you want that confidence when you book it, then I would suggest super host as well. All right, back to the uh, Airbnb website. Okay. Okay, in my search here, I want two bedrooms, two bathrooms. I'd like it if they were a super host, so I'm gonna go ahead and check that. Under amenities here, I definitely want Wi-Fi, an indoor fireplace. Self-check-in is always important to me. Depending on the time of year, you know, you want air conditioning. And let's just say I want a washer and dryer. Now down here, you can already see it's says that I went from our 300 that we had before down to 46 states. So if we click show 46 states, 
it'll bring up the stage and you can see it over here listed on the map so you just basically find the area that you want or you can just like look at the um, list over here and it'll actually highlight on the map you can see it's highlighting this one if I hover over that. So it sort of just shows you where everything is here. And actually option, or option two is a plus property. Let's just take a look at this one. We're not gonna go through the entire listing. I just wanna show you a few things here. So just to note, this person has a 4.77 rating with 111 reviews. So that's pretty good. You can see you're getting in the entire cabin here. And here's some pictures you can click through. Uh, here's some important details that I highlight. You know, they show that you're getting the entire home. They have self check-in. The 11 recent guests to this place say it was sparkling clean, which is definitely important. Also note that this is, uh, shows you like this is a rare find which means that it's booked more often than it's not. And down here you can see like what the bedrooms have, like this one has king beds and looks like most of the bedrooms and there is even one bug bed. Uh, you can see the amenities and things like that down there. Um, so that's all good to note. And if you keep scrolling down, you can actually see all the reviews. I would highly suggest going through these reviews, not for every one of the properties, but maybe like make a list and then go back through all the reviews of the ones you are thinking about. But that's this property. Let's look at another one real fast. Ooh, here's a cool looking uh, location in Gatlinburg, little chalet. And as you can see, this one looks super nice. Wow, look at that, love it. But anyway, here's another thing I wanted to point out. See this option right here, enhance cleans. Some of the Airbnbs have been doing this now where they actually go the extra mile for you and do like the rigorous cleaning and stuff like that based on like, you know, hospitality standards and stuff like that. So basically what hotels are doing now, these people will go through it and you can click on it and see what they're doing here. Like they're sanitizing all surfaces, they're using improved products, they're thoroughly cleaning, they're wearing masks and gloves, they're washing all linens and following all local guidelines. So if you with the extra level of confidence with your Airbnb, you might want to look for the enhanced cleaning option here. But anyway, as you can see, this is another rare find. It's usually booked, meaning a lot of people stay here, which is cool. And another thing to note, I'm not gonna go through every single picture here, but like, I would go through these pictures. Like, if you're concerned that there's a road right here, you know, then this might not be the right place for you. But I love, love when hosts do this, when they actually show you how the driveway is and like basically an overview of the parking area. As you can see, it's a little bit of a hill and there is a great amount of parking right here. So it's nice that they show you that in advance so you know what to expect when pulling up to the house. But I would just say, make sure you go through these pictures and uh, go through them with a fine tooth comb. Make sure everything looks up to your standards and whatnot. But as you can see, they have different property types all over the place. And just at a quick glance, you can see how many guests, like in basic amenities and things like that. You know, they range from cabins to condos and anywhere in between. All right, just a few tips before we wrap this up here. Remember that these are actual people's properties, so be respectful. Maybe even more respectful than you would be at like a hotel or whatever. Think of it as staying at a friend's house. If you still wanna be friends with that person after your stay, you might wanna take care of their property like it's your own. Don't jump at the first selection that you make here. You know, sometimes pictures can make you like say, wow, and you know, just hold on to that bookmark it, write it down, write the number down or the listing down or whatever, or keep the tab open because it does open in different tabs. So keep the tab open and go with your top five or something selections and take those and really just dive into it. Like look at the location on Google Maps, make sure it works for you. Look at the reviews in depth. Look at the person that you're renting it from. Make sure they have a profile picture and that their account is verified with a four star rating or better. And if they only have like one or two reviews, you might be a little bit cautious about that. If you have questions about a property, you can always reach out to the host and ask the questions. And and pro tip here though is great hosts will reply within 24 hours. If it takes them longer than 24 hours to reply, 
I'd keep looking. And my last tip is do all these transactions like pay and talk to the host through Airbnb, the website or the app itself. It's a little bit shady if a host says, hey, I can save you a little bit of money if you book direct through me. Once you do that, you're basically at the host's mercy and there's no repercussions. For example, if the host cancels you without any notice. Don't ever, ever pay cash to anyone, even if the host is really pushing you to it to save you some money. Don't chat with the Airbnb host outside the website or the app. And pro tip, you can chat directly through the app with the host. So that's how I would suggest doing it. If you do this, you'll all but guarantee no security or fraud issues. And that's the most important part when booking these Airbnbs. Stay safe. Airbnb is a great alternative to traditional hotels and a lot of times you're actually supporting local families from the area. So if you haven't thought about Airbnb for your next trip to Gatlinburg or Pigeon Forge, I'd definitely check it out. It's a great option. Have you stayed at any great Airbnbs in Gatlinburg or Pigeon Forge? Drop me a comment below. Let me know. All right, everyone. Make sure you stick around for just a little bit longer. We'll have some end cards with some video suggestions and we'd love it if you'd watch another video. Make sure you drop a like on this video and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not so you don't miss any of our great upcoming videos. If you like this video, consider heading over to our coffee page and dropping us a tip. All the money goes to support the channel. All right, everyone. We'll catch you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Peace and love.